Hi guys, in this video I'd like to show you a program I've been working on for a couple of months by now because I think it's uh, quite interesting to see what it can do because it can render 3D, 4D and any dimensional object in a perspective. But before I get to show you the real features of the program you have to know how perspective works. So let me switch over here. Uh, here I have an origin point and a set of three vanishing points and if I create a point here it means if I move the, the point from uh, the origin to its vanishing point, it means that I move really the, the real point in a specific direction. Here I have moved the point to infinity. Here it's at the, the origin of, of the set of, of points. Um, I can create another set of points here and here, which means that uh, I have really moved this point to this direction and the same point to this direction to create uh, set of points on uh, the corners of the cube I'm going to make. To make a cube I have to connect first uh, these points to other vanishing points and these these points and now I can form an intersection here and I have created another point. This point is uh, formed by creating an intersection between a line that connects uh, another point and a vanishing point and uh, another line. I can do the same for other points, like for this one. Now I'm going to mark the intersection and now the cube is almost done. The only, th the only thing I have to do is connect this point with the other vanishing point and I can form the intersection. Now I have created a cube and it's shown in perspective. Of course I can move these things around to show a different kind of perspective, but it's all just changing the parameters of the projection. The perspective is still the same and the cube isn't deformed, it's just showing it in a different angle. So now I hope you know at least the basics of how projection works and another neat trick of projection uh, of perspective is that I can just add another vanishing point like here and the same rules still apply so I can connect for example this origin with this point and it means I move uh, the point in another direction not not x not y not z but in some other direction I have just added like w or whatever you can call it uh, so it's quite um, hard and long to do this in in this program so I can just switch to my program and change the kind of uh, space I'm working in and now I can see you can see that I have four vanishing points in in this scene and what I am showing here is a tesseract it's a four dimensional kind of cube it's an analogy of cube in four dimensions the analogy of a cube in two dimensions is a square in one dimension it's just a line segment so this this thing is a tesseract you can see it from uh, the directions from these directions but if I move if I move this vanishing point closer to the origin it just looks like a cube connected to another cube inside but that's really what tesseract is it's two cubes interconnected but uh, the connection happens in the fourth dimension to show you another uh, interesting aspect of this program I have to first to switch to one dimension and here you can see the one dimensional analogy of a cube, um, just a line segment. And here's something that uh, I have to find. Uh, I had to find a formula which uh, can map a coordinate in a specific direction to the ratio from the origin to its uh, matching vanishing point. Because it cannot be just arbitrary, it has to be a specific formula. Here I can show you the formula that I am I'm using. This function represents the ratio between the origin and the vanishing point uh, and the x parameter is the, the amount, the coordinate in the specific direction. It has one parameter, a, I can change it so you see what uh, how the function changes and the parameter really specifies the ratio uh, for one. For the value of one, what should the ratio be? You can see that this 
this line is uh, formed by an intersection here and it shows the parameter. If I increase the parameter, for example, to 1, you can see that the scene quite deforms. It's uh, not really useful, but all points are projected to infinity by now. You can see I can, I'm can i changing the parameter A here on this on this track bar and when I move it to infinity it first it bugs the program because it's not it's not something you should do in this program and if I move it close to one you can see that the point is now projected to the vanishing point. Uh, to show you some some picture of what I had to do and how important it is to have a formula for for this transformation. I will switch to two dimensions and decrease the, the track bar here because it there is some there are some issues when you when you set a large value for, for this value. Now here I've projected a square onto the scene and I will change the square in a bit. Here you can see two squares, those two are squares, and um, they are side by side. And it's really, really important to have a correct to have a correct formula for this because if I if I moved, for example, this point closer to the vanishing point, uh, the geometry wouldn't uh, really really be correct because the intersection here would be off by by some 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 amount. So you can see now that the, the formula is really correct because if I form another square bar using this trick by, by first creating the diagonals and then intersecting and move them, moving them to the vanishing point, I can create another square by doubling the previous one, by cloning the previous one. Now, it, of course, this, this thing is a rectangle, but it's formed by two squares. And the intersection also interconnects the, the middle line segment, so I know this formula is correct. Now I can reset the scene to show a normal square. This square is centered. The previous square was uh, not centered. The, the the origin was a point on the square, on the corner of the square, but now it's not. Now the square is centered. I can, of course, move the origin around. And uh, some other inter interesting thing on this program is that when I change the value of A, or the, the units, unit ratio, it can sometimes uh, remove existing points. Now you can see that instead of converging lines, like in this example, th those two line segments converge on, on this point, and the point is produced by their intersection. If I enlarge this parameter a bit, these lines now Diverge. They are almost parallel now, but if I can, if I change the perspective a bit, you can see that these lines diverge from a specific point, which is um, on the uh, on up from the screen. So I also had to account for that. The program can check if the intersection is correct and uh, produce something I call an inverse point, which means that the line that should really be connected to the point instead go from it. So this line uh, still points to the vanishing point, but goes uh, from it to infinity. So now we can move to 3D. Of course, I have to lower the, the parameter a bit for the perspective to show something interesting. This is a cube. You have seen this one before. And of course, I can move the origin. This one is the center of the cube. To show you that it's really the center of a cube, I can draw the diagonals. Now the diagonals are drawn and you can see they are all intersect in the center of, of the projection in, in the origin. Now let's move to something more interesting. Uh, this is the Tesseract I've shown you before. Now I can also move the vanishing points around to create a different shape in 2D, but of course in 4D it's still the same cube, the same Tesseract. Due to the way the program is created, I can change uh, the number of or the dimension to any number, so I can move from 4D to 5D. Now I have um, Pentaract or whatever you call it, a 5D analogy of a cube. Uh, it's 
barely visible, but if you look uh, closer, you can see that this thing is actually formed by connecting two tesseracts, because a tesseract is also formed by connecting two cubes, and cube is formed by connecting two, two squares. So the analogy still holds for higher dimensions. This thing is a penderact. Uh, it's a five-dimensional analogy of a cube, and you can still view it using perspective. Of course, I can change the parameters, move the origin. I can even uh, enlarge the parameter, but it's not much useful. And also, if I change it past a half of the interval, you can see that the whole scene just disappears. The reason why this happens is uh, quite simple. If you look at this scene, you can see, you can see that uh, the formula is a hyperbolic curve, and of course here the curve ends at minus infinity, so this part here on the left is not uh, useful for me, so I simply discard it, and if the projection goes, if the parameter goes beyond a half of the interval, you can see that this line intersects the x-axis at minus 1 and all of these points have either minus 1 or 1 as one of their coordinates. So that's the reason why if I change the parameter a bit, if I make it larger than a half, um, the projection breaks because there is nothing I can project the point to. All points, basically all, all except the uh, this this one are projected to infinity and I can't even get the correct angle for, for the line segments. So I will just lower the parameter a bit and I can move to 6D. As you can see the the object looks quite nice but it's not it's not uh, it's a just a projection projection of a six dimensional cube. So I can again move move these vanishing points around. I can move the origin too, and this thing is a projection of a six-dimensional cube, hexaract or whatever you can you, you can call it. So that's basically what uh, my program can do at the moment. I plan to include some, some other features like ability to add any point you want, connect any two point, points you, you want to connect, and applying some transformation. The program can represent any vector in a, in a specific vector space, and also a square matrix with the same dimension as the vector. So, this is all for now. I hope you uh, find this program at least a bit interesting and see you next time. Bye!